Okay, here's what we're going to work on today. This is a uh, Forge World uh, Mechanicus Majos uh, with a ride cleanser there. Um, what we're going to do today is do a nice uh, deep red, um, sort of a metallic -y red um, on this back car pace right here. Um, it's small enough to do quickly so I can I can make a video of it. Uh, this is the same red that I'm going to be doing on all of my Mechanicus medals like that. Um, I've got a Warhound that I'm working on. You can see one of the... the what are those? I don't know what they are. The big shin armor plate there. Um, that'll get that same treatment that I have on a bunch of the rest of the parts. Uh, it just needs more priming. Uh, so for what you'll need is obviously your model. Um, I base in black... Uh, you want a nice dark color for your metals to go over because we're going to use metals as our actual base coat. Uh, and then I'm using Minotaur. You can use whatever airbrush paint you want. Um, yeah, I guess you could do this by hand, but I think it's a lot more work, so uh, airbrush if you can. Uh, this is Minotaur's Antique Gold and Noble Gold. We're going to use that for highlighting the Antique Gold. Uh, and then we have uh, three of the Minotaur Ghost Paints. Uh, you can sort of eliminate any one of these, uh, and you can tweak with the um, ratio of these uh, but these are the, the paints that I use to get this color um, we start off with uh, the ghost tint magenta then we have uh, the ghost tint uh, fresh blood and finally the ghost tint orange you don't use a whole lot of that unless you want a much brighter red than I do uh, so I don't use a whole lot of that it's usually only one or two coats uh, somewhere in the middle and then lots of magenta and the, the whole lot of the blood red. Um, so that's that. I don't have a good setup to um, show myself airbrushing, so I'm going to pause the video and then we'll restart it at sort of the important steps. So, see you in a bit. Okay, here we are back. Uh, we've got obviously some gold on it. This is just the antique gold. Um, it's, oh, but hey, I missed a spot. I'll have to go back and get some in there. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, this is not a perfectly smooth layer of gold. We don't actually want it to be. We want a little bit of variation under there. Um, and uh, this is also only the first layer. We're going to do a highlight layer to get a little bit more uh, definition in between those bits that are going to be silver. Uh, there's those ribs. I'm going to paint those silver. That's kind of my... Um, scheme is silver and that uh, candy red so this is our first coat and I will be back in a bit after I do on the second bout of gold okay we're back outside again and you can see I don't know if the camera is gonna pick this up very well uh, but we have another layer of gold on this car pace um, it's a little rough but it's not too bad um, it's a little bit smoother than it was before. That's exactly how we want it. Uh, we do want some uh, black still showing through and there's just the right amount for me, for what I'm looking for. And we have a couple of good spots where um, where we've got some, some good shadow, a nice little gradient in there, uh, sort of right where I want it. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. And it's also a relatively small piece of a model, so. Um, this kind of thing is a little bit easier to see on a bigger model, but, well, birds are, are being quite loud. Sorry about that. Uh, my compressor is going inside. You might, it might start up here in a moment, and uh, then you wouldn't be able to hear me at all. So that's why I'm out here. Uh, light's also a little bit better. Um, so sorry about that digression. Uh, now, why are we doing this uh, gold first? Uh, instead of just, why not just use proper red paint and go from there? Well, you get a pretty unique effect. Really, birds? Stop it. Um, yeah, sorry. You get uh, a really unique effect. It gives you a little bit of a metallic red. It's really deep and rich uh, that you just don't get with, with standard red paint. Um, I have painted up a, a Titan with the an airbrush uh, red paint whole nine yards and it looks good but it doesn't have quite the same effect uh this is is particularly and we're back um i was explaining why we 
do the gold first. So the gold is there to uh, take our ghost tints, which are effectively glazes or candy coats, uh, depending on what school of thought you're coming from, whether it's sort of the fine art or um, car painting, which is where part of this idea is from. Um, my background is, is more art-oriented, so I, I typically say glaze. Uh, they're basically the same thing. It's a clear paint that modulates the color as the light goes through it. So it'll go down to the bottom layer, which in this case is this nice highlighted gold, and we'll come back through and we'll take on the red and the magenta and the orange or whatever glaze that you decide to use. Uh, so you can use blue, you can use, you know, uh, reds, you can use yellows, you can use whatever. Uh, now, the reason that we use gold for the reds is gold is relatively warm when it reflects. And it will, um, you know, let's get over in the sunlight, get a little bit better light now that there is sun. There we go. Okay. Sorry, the sun wasn't up. It's still pretty early in the morning here. So um, so we've got this nice gold down. Oops, we're focusing on the wrong thing. There we go. Um, so this will give our red a nice warm, very rich color to it. So that's the whole reason that we're we're doing this gold before we do those those uh, the glazes. So I will be back in a minute with the first, I'll probably do a couple layers because I do them super thin and uh, the first two or three don't really look like they do a lot. So I will be back in a moment. Okay, here we are with the first two coats of red on. We got the magenta down and the bloody red. Uh, and that gives us this nice uh, sort of uh, red, metallic color, uh, but it's still not quite where we're looking for. Uh, so we're going to wait for this to dry and go over this with orange first, uh, and then we'll go back to the magenta. We'll do a couple of coats of that, and then we'll do probably three or four coats of the uh, red. And oops, we're off frame. And then I will come back and show you where that is, and then I will show you the gloss that I use to finish it off. Uh, it's in a rattle can, so I'll show you that. Okay, we're back out here, and as you can see, we have a nice, lovely deep red in there that still manages to get the sort of warm metallics in there. Um, but yeah, this is pretty simple. This is about uh, three coats of the red. Um, now, after the... Um, the, the last step that I showed you guys, and about, uh, I think it's two coats of the magenta. Um, and there was an orange in there somewhere. Um, it was early on in the process, so um, I don't know if that was in there before I showed you guys last or not. Uh, but this is basically done. Uh, after this, all that's left is a gloss coat over this. Now, you know, obviously the model isn't all painted, um, you know. He's otherwise all black with some overspray. Um, I could have taped him off. Um, the overspray isn't bad. Uh, I've kind of been doing this for a while, and everywhere that there's overspray, it's not really a big deal. I can go back with a brush, touch it all up. It'll be fine. Um, but before I do that, I definitely want to get a, uh, a varnish down over this. Uh, there's a couple reasons for that. One, uh, it will protect all this work that I've done on this. Uh, and two, it will also give it a really good final shine. Um, the shine on this is pretty good. The Minotaur Ghost tints are pretty glossy. Um, they're not like super high gloss, but they're quite glossy. Uh, the stuff that I use to uh, gloss my uh, models, though, is very glossy. I actually use an automotive acrylic uh, gloss in a rattle can. Uh, it's made by Duplicolor. It's their acrylic gloss. Um, I, get, I do my black primer and stuff like that from them too, so it's available in an automotive store. Um, it's really good. It's acrylic, so it won't, it shouldn't react with the acrylic paints. Um, it, I've never had a problem with it. Um, it's quite good. It's relatively cheap, and um, yeah, that's it. Uh, I will go ahead and add on to the end of this video, oops, we're back in the shadows, uh, on to the end of this video a um, 
a couple of shots of my work in progress Warhound. Uh, I've got some good, uh, this same technique, I've got some good, uh, the big main carapace and stuff like that done on it. So you'll be able to see what this guy will look like in a bit. Okay, and here we'll end with this. Here you can see um, how this looks on a somewhat larger scale. Um, this is the exact same process. Uh, it's a slightly more done model. It's obviously still, you know, missing a half the model, but uh, this is most of the armor plates that go on the guy. So you can see it on some good curves and things like that uh, and how it sort of looks in the... Um, in the uh, sort of in the large on a on a bigger piece, um, you can see a couple of mistakes on some of this too. Um, <laughs> it's a big piece, and I'm still not exactly an expert at this, um, but I'm pretty happy with how this technique has turned out. Um, it's sort of inspired by like hot rods and and that kind of thing. Um, so. I'm super happy with how this has come out. Hopefully this has been informative and you'll be able to use it yourself.